what I'm, what I'm doing in there is I'm trying to flesh it out for you. So it's not just a bunch of rote repetitive calisthenics that you're doing, but that each one of these things is a uh, an internal chi cultivating exercise of its own in its own right. Besides the fact that it's opening the joints and doing all that cool stuff too. So the um, getting uh, uh, you know explaining what's going on and um, and getting to down to how the, how the uh, the things put together. So we'll uh, we'll continue with that. And then I've got another set that uh, that Nora brought to my attention, and uh, we'll, I'll talk about that later. But it's uh, uh, it's kind of cool as a, also a way of inculcating a lot of the, uh, the principles that, that I've been teaching without actually doing a Tai Chi form so that we can actually, you can have a uh, set of exercises which can be done uh, without, a lot of, uh, without a lot of memorization. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, you have the uh, the camera going. Yeah, I have the. I, I already the started recording. the recording. Okay, great. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with uh, the uh, reclaiming lost territory set, and the um, begin with the, your the your right foot forward. Pick up the heel of your left foot. So you're you're like this. So all the weight is is in the in the right foot. So you're just you're lightly on the toe of the left foot. So we're acclimating ourselves to the uh, to being able to be stable and, and central equilibrium on the uh, on the one leg. So you reach with the knee one, tuck in the chin, open up the J pillow gate, and feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. So notice the knee is not moving. Everything's happening here at the qua. It's all opening and closing. Everything's very relaxed. You're not forcing anything. And you started off by putting your hands on your hips just so your shoulders and your hips are moving together. So what we're not looking for is, we're not looking for this kind of thing, right? Which is a, a whole different exercise. This is all about really creating qua awareness, remembering what it feels like to stand on one leg and to reacquaint yourself with central equilibrium. So you do that and then once your arms, once you get that, you can just let your arms hang and turn. The turn is a very gentle turn. You're not forcing anything. No points are given for stretching. You're, it's not about stretching, it's about letting go, about trusting the, the uh, sung, the releasing down into the intrinsic structure. You're not pushing away from the ground, you're sinking down into it. And then go to your back foot, pick up your front heel. So in profile is like this, you get your, your like that. And you're doing the same deal here with the back foot. You sit, feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and rotate, right? Reach with the knee one. Keep lengthening your spine as you do this. The very gentle way of, of reminding yourself and practicing the three pillars, energetic coherence, central equilibrium, and sung kwa. Breathe as you do it. I may cut this short, but I generally like to do about 20 of these on each, each side, front leg, back leg, and then switch. So that way you get a nice, release in the in the quad you're reminding yourself how to sink down how to let go release down into the the hip joint and feel the passive um, support of your leg okay then we switch uh, your left leg forward pick up your right heel and same kind of deal here your this time your all the weight is in the left leg and you're releasing down, down, down. Nice and easy. And you can do this for a long time. Like I say, generally when I'm teaching a class, it's like 
20, but if I'm doing it by myself, I could be doing it for quite a while. Just, just hanging out and do do do. And the more you do it, you know, of course, you're establishing those patterns and you're getting your body really familiar with what it feels like to be sung qua. All right, and then shift your back foot, pick up your, your front heel, your left heel, and on the toe there, and nice and easy, very relaxed. Let your arms just hang. And when you do this, you're unwinding as you're doing that. You're unwinding your arms, letting the shoulders relax, and letting go of that chronic muscular tension there. Beautiful, okay, next. We're going to open the jade pillow gate. Remember the jade pillow gate is, is this point right here at the base of your skull, that little hollow there where your atlas enters into your cranium. So you lift the chin, you drop the chin, you feel the stretch, you're pivoting, pivoting from the topmost vertebra, okay? You're getting that going. I generally like to do about 10 of these. But you can slow it way down and do fewer, you can do more. The main point is that you're really getting into the pivot. You're lengthening the tissues in your neck. All right, next we have, you're reaching with your right arm and reaching with your head in the opposite direction and feeling the lengthening down their shoulder, down the neck, down the arm. And you can move your head around, you can move your arm around, get the uh, maximum benefit from that, right? So if you do this on a regular basis, daily if possible, you know, you start to create more and more space in your body. You get more, uh, you start to reclaim lost territory and you go the other way. All those tissues which have getting, been getting shorter and tenser, you're letting them go. Good. And now rotate the head. about five of these each way. You're exploring the range of motion. And go the other way. Just notice where your neck might catch. And very lovingly, very gently, kind of work around that, kind of nibble the edges of the tension. Good. Okay, so what are we going to do? Roll down. What's that? Roll down. Roll down, okay. So next, we're going to roll down, stand up straight, and we're going to let the body go one vertebra at a time. Using your breath, bend your knees. Use your breath. Let go. Keep your keep the lower uh, vertebrae stacked up. And you accordion downward. Then straighten your legs, straighten your knees, and continue to drop. Breathe and let go. Don't force anything. Just allow the weight of your body to lengthen. Bend your knees and come up, stacking the vertebrae up, one on top of the other as you come up.
Okay. My hands come up, arch your back, breathe, open the chest, open the shoulders. And then come up, hands come down, round your back, and then arch your back, open, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Yeah, so notice we're, we're working the spine. We're, we're flexion and extension. We're creating space there, some flexibility in the spine, which uh, is a, a major contributor to good health. And also what we're doing is we're opening the shoulders, opening the chest, creating more space there. And so getting that, creating more expansion there. So you have, have uh, uh, a wider range of motion. And uh, but also a controlled and powerful range at the same time. Uh, next, we're going to do the knocking on the door. And the idea here is you set your elbow and you come back like this as if you're rapping on a door behind you, and the other elbow, the other arm is going back like this. So it goes one, two, one, two, one, two. Good. Okay, let them hang. That means you're just get yourself in a nice, comfortable um, stance, parallel 50 50 stance. Arms are relaxed, but a little bit rounded, and just allow them to release. So let it go of all shoulder arm tension. And as you do that, feel into your hands and notice the increased circulation in your hands. Notice the increased chi in your hands. So this is the, the feeling you're getting in your hands, I have found is the best barometer you get, at least as the earliest one, you'll, you'll, earliest indicator you'll get that you've got a whole body energetic connection. That is, you are plugged into the big chi. You're feeling it through your feet and it's going up through the, uh, you know, through the top of your head and it's coming from the, the heavens down, going out to the bottom of your feet and your whole body is pumped up. So you're just releasing that ah, nice and, and good. So then what we do is we're going to do uh, big circles. So big circles, the idea here is you're, you're, as you inhale, you arch your back, you make these big circles and you're creating space in your joints. You're exploring the range of motion. Then you sink down, squat down, round your back, and come up. So what we don't want to do is this. We don't want to bow forward like this. We want to drop down, right? So that you're feeling centered over the over the balls of the feet as you come down and you're squatting down. Good, and reverse it. Inhale, arch your back, come up and then down and squat. And inhale, arch, and then round your back. And close. 
And you can do those faster or slower to your taste. You can do more or less, but it's a great all around thing. Just relax your arms, let them hang again, and just feel the chi. Feel the sense of fullness in your hands, up your arms, feel it all the way through your body, feel it in your feet. You're loading up and you're removing the internal obstacles to the chi flow. Okay, next one. Hands come up, reach out. I'll do it sideways here. So you're reaching out, bring your shoulder blades together and back, you're pointing out their elbows are dropped and you're making little circles. Point your index fingers, reach out, and create these little circles with your thing. So what we're doing is you're moving entirely from the rotator cuff, opening up the, the shoulder joint. It's something that a lot of us get. If you live this long, you get a shoulder impingement. And uh, so you're, we want to create some space there in the shoulder joint. We're also learning to, to move the arms and relax the shoulders at the same time and palms up and go the opposite direction. Reach with your knee wand, tuck in your chin as you do this. Feel that connection, the tensegrity that permeates your whole body when you do that. Good, and relax. Okay, and one more, we're gonna do the heaven and earth. So start with your hands at chest level, and then reach up and down at the same time, inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. Also, you want to sink down into your into your stance as you do that. You want to really release down into your you get very soon as you're reaching. So the palms up, down. You trying to signal me? Oh, uh, do you also reach up with your knee on as you're sinking? Absolutely. Down? Keep, keep that going throughout. Good, and yeah, relax. Now just hang there for a little bit in a very neutral stance, elbows out. And just feel the chi. It's a lot of bang for your buck in terms of Chi cultivation and circulation. And whenever you do this, you're, you're going into a neutral state and allowing the energy to do its work, allowing it to circulate, to find where it needs to go. But it's a lot smarter than you are. And it's going to find all the nooks and crannies that uh, you can even perceive. So you allow that fullness to go and to rejuvenate your cells. And step in, deep breath, inhale, and exhale, press down, like you're pushing down on a plunger and you're throwing the chi away. Yes? No thumbs? No thumbs. Okay. okay. Should I? I think there's thumbs. Maria has suggested I uh, do the uh, do the uh, the uh, the thumps or the 
uh, the uh, points that these uh, press in here at your at your I mean, where your collarbone meets your sternum, the the fleshy part just to the side of that. Press in with your fingers, or you can you can thump it with your fingers. Breathe into the nose, out to the mouth. Now this is kidney twenty seven. And if that's feeling at all tender, it's because the chi is either clogged up or it's the chi is actually flowing backward. And by bringing your consciousness to that and pressing in, you are allowing that to correct itself, get the chi moving in the right direction. Then you get down to the second rib. Behind that is your thymus gland, and this is for your immune system. So you. Um, you press in on that or thump that and you breathe in out to the mouth and you want to feel behind the rib actually feel into that into that uh, section there into the thymus gland good then go here um, just on the outside of your chest Find a tender spot there and press in on that. And this is for spleen chi. And this helps you to metabolize, not just um, food and drink and drugs and God knows what else, but also experience. So if you're having a tough time, a tough go of it, and you find that thought forms are sticking around, then get your spleen chi going. Good. Then on the underside of your cheekbones, press up on that. That's your stomach too. This is good for grounding and integrating. Good. Then Middle finger in the navel, lifting up, and the other one on your third eye, lifting up. Breathe. This is called hookup. And you're bringing the chi up the central meridian. Good. And uh, while we're at it, this one's a uh, very popular of late. This is for your uh, triple warmer to calm that. Press in on your fingertip, with your fingertips on the center of your forehead. Inhale, exhale, and drag your fingers across your forehead to your temple. Inhale, press in. Exhale, drag your fingers around your ears, down your neck to the back of your neck where it meets your shoulders. Press in. Inhale, and exhale. Bring your hands down to your heart. One more time. Inhale, press in. Exhale, drag your fingers to the temples. Inhale, exhale. Round your ears, down your neck to your shoulders. Inhale, press in. Exhale. And just hang there a minute and just allow yourself to feel into the calmness, the clarity. It has the effect of really calming your shit down. Another thing you can do to balance your your Spleen chi and your triple warmer chi, which the triple warmer is with the part that gets excited whenever you're in a state of emergency, and it drags chi away from the spleen, which has the effect of calming you and to allowing you to metabolize. So just bring one hand on the side of your chest on along the spleen meridian here. It doesn't matter where, just, just somewhere along there, and the other hand on the outside of your your upper arm. That's where the Triple warmer meridian runs up that. And just breathe into that.
and then reverse it. Put your other hand on your ribs, and the other hand on the triple warmer. And breathe. Notice how effective that is. Just allow yourself to give yourself a hug. It's okay, Rick. It's okay. And then let's step in again. Inhale. And clear. Exhale. Just allow yourself to feel into the emptiness. State of just being. You're outside of your default mode network in your brain right now and feel what it feels like to just be. Good. Okay, any questions or not? Before we get started here, let's, well, you can unmute and uh, fire away as, uh, if you have any questions on any of that stuff. Everybody cool? Me. All right. No, I have oh, oh, Sharon. Okay. Uh, when we were doing the shoulder circles, I was a little yes. confused because I thought I heard you say to draw your scapula together. And the small circles, yes. Okay. So I'm not. So I'm not. I'm locking in the scapula then in place, and I'm. You're not. you're you're reaching reaching with your scapula. It's not locking in so much as just reaching with them. So what that does is it opens the opens the chest and the shoulders while you do that. So okay. That, so where we usually get that impingement, you know, from from this is is on the front part of the, the shoulder. So by doing that, you're you're opening up the uh, the shoulder joint and creating some more space there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else? All right, let's do something new. Um, this is, uh, I was saying before that this is something that Nora brought to my attention. And um, it's, a, a, it's a, a set of uh, foundation exercises that is done by the Taoist uh, Tai Chi Society. Uh, I think a master Moy came up with that. And what he's done is he's cobbled together certain moves from various martial arts that uh, uh, can be done as a repetitive uh, exercise, and uh, I've, I'm doing it with with incorporating a lot of the you know, the stuff that I that I find important, you know, particularly the three pillars, and uh, uh, to create a uh, an opportunity to, to very uh, simply go through these exercises and uh, create familiarity with, with certain patterns that we use in the internal martial arts and in a very gentle and uh, uh, easily assimilable way. So uh, the, uh, let's start that again. Okay, so. So the first one, you bring your arms out like on a 45 degree angle in front of your chest. And here, very important to reach with your elbows. And by that, if I'm reaching with my elbow, it's like I'm going to, going to touch something or push against something with my elbow. 
not tense, but just <laughs> extending it outward. And what that does is it creates space in the shoulder joint, but it also it uh, it releases the the kink in the hose that most of us have in our shoulders. So by by doing this, but you you reach out with that, you start with your palms facing you, and you just rotate the forearms and back. Okay. And the key here, the, the little addition that I've made to this is as you're as you're turning in, you're reaching with your thumbs as you're rotating that way. And as you're coming the other way, you're reaching with your little fingers. So you're consciously, you're not just going dot 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 dot. You're not just wiggling your arms around. You're consciously creating this energetic connection. And you're you, as you're doing this, you're reaching with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints, and doing it this way. And it's a very powerful thing. So, Ray, you want to give me a hand with this? I'll, I'll do, do a little demonstration. Show the the um, very different when you do it this way as opposed to just mechanically moving your arm. If Maria is, uh, if I grab Maria's wrist and she tries to turn her her, her arm like this from as a mechanical approach, it's not going to happen, right? The the arm is just not just not strong enough as a uh, the muscles in the arm are just not strong enough. But if she's coming this way and she's opening and she reaches with her thumb, then <laughs> the uh, it creates an entirely different effect. If we go the other way and she here she's reaching with her her, her pinky and she she's going this way. So the uh, you you're generating gin by by doing that, right? Think of it as oh, turning a turning a opening a jar, right? You're reaching with the with the, the, the little fingers you turn as you go to tighten it, and as the thumb you're going to open it. So uh, so that's that's how that works. Thank you. Okay, so here we are. We're we're like this, and we're so it's not something we do ordinarily. That is, reach with our thumbs, reach with our, our little fingers. So it's something that doing it consciously many times, you start to build neural pathways that make that easier to do. It's, you don't have to reinvent the wheel each time you do it. As always, you want to feel your three pillars. You're reaching with your knee one. You got your jade pillow gate open. You're feeling the balls of your feet. Your weight is centered. And just feel the energy that's building up in your arms just by the simple action of turning like this. Yeah. So just bring your arms down to the side and just feel the chi in your hands as you do that. So you start to get um, major juju going. Um, next one is your bring your hand up the center line and reach out. The other hand comes up. This hand comes down. Boom. And you're on the center line the whole time. You're also as you're doing it, your your feet are, are parallel, right? But you're you're also turning your body as you're doing this. You reach out with your wrist, your elbow, you extend with your fingers, opening your joints. You're really feeling. Again, this is creating the uh, new, new neural pathways, neurons that fire together, wire together. So you're getting that support in your body, but to set that up, you need your intention. Again, you're reaching out there, extending out the elbows, the wrists, the fingers.
Good. So, and you can do that for a while. Any questions so far? Anybody? Okay. It, uh, is it the uh, uh, heart spleen, heart trip? Oh, yeah, yeah. So the uh, what's happening energetically here is you're taking the water chi from, from down here. It's coming up the center line to the heart where it meets the fire chi. The fire chi then comes out and it comes down and heats up the water chi. So you're creating this turbine, this Taoist turbine where you're, you're bringing the water chi up, the fire chi down. So you're reversing the, you're turning that around, right? So you're getting this, the, the fire under the water, which then heats up the cauldron and your dantian and allows you to, allows that, that energy to circulate better and it nourishes your heart, your kidneys, your spleen, your lungs, your liver. And, and by doing that, you get this, but you can also feel the, the gin that you're getting there as well. Thank you. So, uh, okay, next we uh, feet still parallel and hands are down by the side. So you feel the balls of your feet, knee one, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. You, uh, your hands come up. Rotate your palms down, reach down with your elbows, your wrists, your hands, and squat down, right? And the two ways to do this, the way I prefer is to just go down to the point where you feel that, you know, you're stable, you're, you're connected. The other way is to go for the, the full squat, but I find that that breaks the energy when you go to the full squat there. It's good for other things, but I prefer this one. I prefer to just go and press down. So the feet should be a little wider than shoulder width for this one. That awareness here, you're feeling the, you're feeling the viscosity of the space you're moving through. You're coming down, you're feeling those elbows, feeling the wrists, feeling the hands, right? Yeah. As far as the knees go, I prefer to, to not break the 90 degree point. There's, there's a point here, you know, here it's, it's above, it's just a little bit more than 90 degrees. If I go down below 90 degrees, then I'm putting a lot of strain on my knees and it's, uh, it's preferable to not do that. The other thing too is to not bow forward as you're, as you're uh, lean forward as you're doing it, but you're, you're sinking down, straight down your, your body is over the, balls of your feet as you go down. Okay, now we're going to put your, put your uh, left foot forward and uh, the uh, hands out. And here we're gonna be we're transferring the weight between the, between the legs. And the way that, the best way that I found to do it is you never just rock back and forth like this, right? Anytime you do that, you've lost your root, every time. So I want to go, I'm going to feel the ball of my right foot, set my right knee, and then release my right quad, just like we did in the first exercise tonight. And you press down like this. You sink it down. Notice that my, my body is centered over the ball of my right foot. I've transferred my weight without really rocking back at all. Then I feel the ball of my left foot. I turn and I reach out. 
And then feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, turn to the right, press down. Turn back, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and reach out. Inhale as you reach out and exhale. Inhale, this is the yang part of the move. And exhale on the yin part of the move. Good, and then go to the other side, put your right foot forward. Same deal. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the left. So we're getting sung kwa here. We're releasing down. Now we're going back. I'm still my left leg. I feel the ball of my right foot, push my right knee forward to sink and ah, oh, press out. And then left ball, set the left knee, press down, right? And push. All this action is happening through the quad. The whole weight transfer is happening through the quad. There's no, no rocking back and forth at all. There are variations you can do on that. You can turn the hands different ways. You can do things like that, but that's uh, the way that uh, you can go, uh, you can play around with it once you, once you get the hang of that. But the real key on that one is the qua. It's being able to use your ball knee qua to uh, your best advantage. Now, the next one is to uh, do the same thing. I'm gonna go to the, the left here. Only this time we come down, this time we reach out and feel it from your feet up through your legs, up through your hips, your, your back, your shoulders, your arms, everything goes all the way out and then back. And you're really elongating. So this gets uh, a lot more uh, back stuff involved. All right, and then we go to the other side. Reach and now reaching is real important because everything in Tai Chi is about the reaching. It's not about muscular contraction, it's about reaching, which takes us an entirely different way of moving the body than we have been familiar with. We're opening rather than contracting. So muscular tension goes bye-bye and we, we're creating space in the body and we're finding a much, a very different kind of power, a soft power that comes with that, that is actually a good deal stronger than you can generate with the same amount of muscular contraction. Good, and back to center. Good, now back to weight 50-50. And knees are unlocked. Again, recheck, feel the balls of your feet, relax your lower back, allow your tailbone to drop, knees are bent, the uh, reach with your knee one, tuck in the chin, and then bring your arms out slightly forward at about, so your hands are around the Dantian level. and just relax and hold that posture. We're opening the, the gates to the big chi, 
to the knee one, to the bulge here, to the young tron in your feet. We're allowing the body to fill up. Most people, when they get to be my age, they're they they're spending their own chi their whole life, and they're 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 losing their vitality. So what we're trying to do here is to not use the personal chi. So we're tapping into the big chi. We're not trying to store it up. We're just increasing our capacity to to receive that energy and to circulate it throughout our bodies. And we're increasing our tolerance for how much chi we can handle. The more we do this, the more we we the more we have to play with more vitality you have to play with. Then bring your arms up to chest height, reaching out. Again, reaching with the elbows, relaxing the shoulders, pointing your index fingers. Opening the joints. By reaching with the knee one, you're you're lengthening the spine. You're creating space between the vertebrae. And throughout all these exercises, I didn't mention before, you wanna have your hand kind of cupped, like, like it's a little rounded. The fingers are spread. If you put your hand on your head, it'll give you the shape you want for your hand. It's like you're holding a volleyball or something, you're, or a beach ball. You're, you got that. So you're creating that space there with the, uh, in the, in the fingers opening the joints. So just notice the chi in your hands. And, and here you can feel your hands op opposing each other and you can feel the field being generated between your hands. That's because the, uh, the Lao Gung points in your in the palms, your hands are, are both, they're on the uh, pericardium meridian. They're, they're removing a lot of excess chi from the heart. So they're both yang poles and they're pushing against each other like two north poles of a magnet of magnets. And you can do that as long as you like. Get back to neutral. Feel the chi in your hands, in your feet. Feel it circulating throughout your whole body. And step in, deep breath, and disappear the chi. When we disappear the chi, we create a vacuum, allow space for the nature chi to come in. Hold for a minute, just relax into the emptiness. Yeah. Okay. Have a seat. Hmm? Have a seat. I'm having a seat. So it's a neat little set. And uh, thank you, Nora, for cluing me in on that. That's pretty cool. As one, you can easily adapt to whatever Tai Chi, Qigong, or whatever you're doing. Uh, any questions on that? Can we go to, there we go. And, Okay, Valerie. My question is, you'll do this again, won't you? That yeah, we have to say again? That, you'll do this again, won't you? That do it again? Yes, if, if, yes. if you wanted that, I will, I will happily do it again. This yes. also will be available, the, uh, the video for this will be available too. So if people want to check that out, that's, that's good. This is it. And what's it, what's it called again? Uh, foundation exercises. Uh, okay for uh, foundation exercises for the Taoist Tai Chi Society. Is that right, Nora? 
Uh, where'd Nora go? She went away somewhere. Okay. Oh, she's so, nodding. She's <laughs> nodding. Okay, good. Oh, there she is, way back there. Okay. Hi, Nora. <laughs> good. So, yes. So, that's what that's called. And uh, really, what it is is they're just moves from, from a variety of Taiji Qigong postures that uh, got just cobbled together to, uh, to make a, a cool set that you can use as a repetitive set that, uh, you know, really gets, gets you stoked. Anybody else? Richard. Um, I'm just a little confused about the rotation of my hand. Okay. Uh, when I rotate my hand this way, yes. am I am I reaching with my thumb? No, you're reaching with your you're, you're reaching with your pinky. You're leading with your pinky. Okay. When so you're I'm turning this with, way, leading with my pinky. Right. And when okay. you're going the opposite way, you're leading with the thumb. Okay, that's what I thought, but yeah. I got, I got a little confused. And I, I may I may have said it wrong at some point, but that's that's the uh, that's the thing. And just get that get that hand so you you know. It's rounded. It's it's yeah. like you got a you're you're palming a basketball with it. That's you know that that kind of thing. You and it, you can feel the chi that that get you get just by doing. You can do that all day. You can just kind of have that rounded hand there, and it uh, it really creates a lot of a lot of juju in that. So if someone is holding my wrist like this, right, I'm gonna reach with my thumb. No, that one you're reaching with your pinky for that one. <laughs> you're, 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 so you're going this way, right? And you're going the other way. You're reaching with the thumb. Okay. Okay. So you just, just, just feel it. Just give yourself. Yep. Have your hand here. Feel the resistance there, right? And then you just you can't okay. even hold yourself. Yeah, <laughs> right. Whenever, whenever okay. you get the, when you're doing that. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. Um, Dennis. Yeah, could you show the rotation on the one where you came up the center line of your of, of your chest again? This one? Yeah, that one. Yeah. How, how did the okay. rotation of the hand again? So, so here I'm uh I do a little there we go. So the idea is I'm coming up the center line, palm up, rotate the forearm, palm goes out. So, okay. So notice that 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 hand there again, right? The left hand comes up and out. Oh. And then you're you're using the claw to do this. So what you're what you're doing, you're getting this this so it's a boom. You're able to yeah. able to generate a tremendous amount of of power with a very little amount of uh, of uh, you know muscular contraction. So it's and a, your pinky comes up then out, and your thumb back. is pointed down as it comes down. Say again. Your pinky is down as it comes up, and then it goes up, and your thumb is down on the outside. Okay. So yeah, the thumb up, and then pinky's up. So there's a yeah, rotation okay. like that, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, they say the okay, other way. Thumbs up as it's going up. Thumbs down as it's going down. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thumb yes, up. Good. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the thumb points in the direction your hand's going. I guess it's the easiest way to say it. Yeah. 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 Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. You got two minutes to so wrap it up. We got two minutes to wrap it up. Uh, oh, wait. Other, Beatrice uh, had a. What's that? Beatrice wanted to say. Beatrice. Something. I just want to say this felt great. That, that was amazing. The sequence felt so amazing. Can you speak up, please? Oh, that sequence felt so amazing. I just want to say it felt so. Oh, good. It felt really. It's it's a lively sequence. Oh, I feel so like. Oh, yeah. Very very nice. Yeah. The reaching good. one really good on my middle back, my mid back. Like when you're reaching, not rocking with the claw, but but that felt amazing. So thank good. you. Good. Yeah. Great. Good. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Hey, Tom, I didn't say hi to you before. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all so very much. Oh, Valerie, one more? Um, this isn't a question, uh, but it's just an observation over the last several weeks that we've been doing this on Wednesday night. Yeah. And 
you know, there's a little bit of me that feels a, slightly embarrassed, but um, I've realized that I have been putting more of the responsibility in the three nails on my big toe versus the ball of the big toe. And when I realize that, uh, you know, I mean, not that I have a problem with balance or anything, but it just, there was this remarkable improvement and everything in, in doing my set, it was just really, really nice. So okay. I just having you emphasize that all the time. I mean, because I think I thought I was there, but I've come to realize, nah, no, I wasn't. The toe is not wrong. The no, toe toe is not, not wrong, wrong. But it, you know, it, you just play with it and say, which one gives you the biggest bang for your buck? Yeah. You, you, you play with it that way. And then, that's that's my whole attitude. I don't I don't care. <laughs> I don't have a dog in the fight. I just I'm just looking and saying, oh, what's 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 the better way to do this? And I'm constantly refining, as as many of you will know. So, uh, are you asking a question there, Fred? Or are you just just doing hand motions? <laughs> Great. Okay. Yes, I see you, Rick. That's that's lovely there. <laughs> uh, um, anybody else? Okay. Uh, see you next week. It's uh, been a lot of fun. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Wait, we got another one. Um, another one. Um, in case you haven't, if you might have forgotten, but it's really nice if we all contribute, if you can, uh, through PayPal to uh, Rick, so that uh, we show our appreciation. Thank you, Valerie. I appreciate that. You can also use Venmo. Can you say and, uh, so that's, that's another way. Um, if you look at the newsletter, you'll see the, uh, see the address there. Okay. I was going to say, can you say the exact PayPal and Venmo address? But PayPal? Yeah, what's the, yeah, the exact the PayPal Venmo. address is uh, tcalchemy at aol.com. The, the usual uh, one there. Uh, I forget what the Venmo one is, but it's... Uh, it's in the newsletter. It's in the newsletter. So uh, it's great. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Okay, great. See you next week. Love Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rick. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rick.